Joining us here in the studio, we have the Gypsy here to talk about the Aaron Douglas Art Fair, which has been nominated for the Community Arts Award uh, for Arts Connects Artie Awards. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. Hey, thanks for being here. Hey, my pleasure, my pleasure. And congratulations to the entire uh, community of Aaron Douglas Art Fair participants. That is just absolutely awesome. I mean, we are all very excited about this, so mm -hmm. it's like, uh, I think it's topmost in our minds right now. We should be thinking about other things, but we're thinking how excited we are to have been nominated for this. All right, so give us the elevator speech about the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. The elevator speech? Uh -huh. Like um, what it's about and all that good stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, Aaron Douglas Art Fair, of course, this is our 10th annual Aaron Douglas Art Fair, mm -hmm. and it's about celebrating the artist within the not only the Topeka area, but the whole region, state, everywhere, okay? It's about bringing artists together that may not have a chance some place else to show their work or they've shown their work but they're little known but mm -hmm. it's to give that boost to that artist that wants to show their stuff be seen it also gives an opportunity to inspire uh, people that might want to be interested in the arts might be interested in the arts and to come out see work that other artists have done and maybe get that inspiration that little push that will cause them to start doing their creative and it's 10 years this year, so maybe a little bit about the history. Well, the history it started with the mural project mm -hmm. out there at the Aaron Douglas Art Park. And it just, the community kind of got involved in that, and they really grabbed hold of it and sprung with it. And the art fair was kind of a child of that mural project. Mm -hmm. And um, the first year of the art fair, it was just a small little thing, you know, but it just it kept snowballing and snowballing and getting bigger and bigger. But because of that one thing, that one little spark, that mural, we now have this 10th anniversary of the art fair. So, and every single year uh, we recognize an artist, an area artist, and we kind of honor that person, you know, and uh, those nominees come from the people that took part in the fair the year before. So it's always, it's always a growing thing. It's always a thing that connects back to previous fairs, but mm -hmm. also pushes towards future fairs also. Yeah, as getting involved with the Aaron Douglas Art Fair on, on your part here, what brought you to, to get involved with it? And what good do you feel that it does for the community? My story getting involved with is kind of funny. Um, I was gone from Topeka for 42 years. And I came back, and one of the first things I saw was a poster for the Aaron Douglas Art Fair, and it kind of intrigued me. So I went by, I, I had not seen the Aaron Douglas Art Fair Park at all. Mm -hmm. So I went by Art Park, and I looked at the mirror. I stood there and looked at the mirror, and I'm like, this this is pretty cool, you know? And at the time, I didn't know I was gonna be coming back to Topeka. You know, mm -hmm. but I thought, hey, I'm gonna have to come to the fair one these days and check it out. Well, when we moved back to Topeka, I thought, maybe I could get involved with this. And I, I don't even remember now who contacted me, but somebody said, hey, we need an interactive arts director. I think it was Stacy Don, mm -hmm. if I remember right, that contacted me mm -hmm. and said, we need an interactive arts director. Would you be interested? And yeah, I jumped on that opportunity immediately to be involved in something as grand as the Aaron Douglas Art Fair, to be a part of that. Yeah, I didn't hesitate for a second. I'm like, yes, I'm there. Very good, very yep. good. Uh, now, okay, so where were you born? I was born in Topeka, Kansas. Where else? St. Francis right. Hospital. All right. <laughs> uh, who would you say is your biggest influence who's turned you into the person you are today? My biggest influence, besides my grandmother, mm -hmm. who pushed me, I would say Harry Roth. Harry Roth took me under his wing. I was going to art classes out at Washburn University and they elevated me out of the kind of preschool stage all the way up into the high school stage almost instantly. Harry found me out there, contacted my grandmother, said I'd like to give you art lessons. My grandmother says, well, we can't afford you. And he says, you don't have to afford me. I want to give him art lessons. Yeah. Harry took me under his wing. I was, I was in Harry's class with adults. I was the only kid there in his mm -hmm. studio. And Harry took me under his wing and he, he would just, he'd tell me these things, art related, but they also related to life. You know, and I kind of carried those with me. It, for Harry, it was not so much about what type of art can I sell, but what type of art could I create? Mm -hmm. And that's what I've carried with me. I don't care what I sell, I care about what I create. Mm -hmm. What was the eight-year-old version of you doing when, in your spare time? 
<laughs> drawing, 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 and drawing. When I was 18 months old, my mom gave me my first coloring book. She told me that on the inside cover, I drew a picture of a cow. You didn't have to guess it was a cow. It was a cow. And uh, she started giving me newsprint pads after that. I never had a coloring book growing up. I was constantly drawing. I never stopped, never ceased. It was just, it was foremost in my mind. Mm -hmm. I knew at eight years old that when I grew up, I was going to be an artist. I had, I had three goals. I was going to be an artist, I was going to be famous, and I was going to be rich. Two out of three ain't bad. I haven't reached the rich yet, <laughs> but I, I'm fine with the artist, and I am pretty well known. So, uh, you know, these were things that I knew at eight years old, and because mm -hmm. I knew these, and because I was so involved in just creating art at that age, I've just carried it with me all my life. It, it, the old expression, practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. You just, you keep doing something that you love until you reach perfection. I haven't reached perfection yet. I'm still working on that part of it, but I'm going to keep doing what I love till I get there. Very good. Now, uh, as we celebrate 10 years with the Aaron Douglas Art Fair this mm -hmm. year, um, what would you say, what, what do you feel, you know, say 10 years ago, where we were, where we are today, what would you say uh, the difference is uh, in Topeka's art scene? Topeka's always had an art scene, but they never really realized that they had that art scene. It, I don't want to say it was undercover. I don't want to say it was underground. It was more like there were creative forces out there, but they didn't have anything to channel that creative force. With the art fair, the art fair created a channel for that creative force. It created something for these artists that were already out there creating art to be able to display that art, to be able to show that art, to be able to be recognized. Mm -hmm. That recognition wasn't there. We had Aaron Douglas who was born here. We had Harry Roth who I mentioned who made his home here. But other people that were creating art, there just wasn't a channel for them. Mm -hmm. Aaron Douglas Art Fair gave them that channel, gave them that direction, it gave them that flow. And as the fair grows more and more, more and more people are getting that flow, they're getting that direction, they're having that channel, that opportunity to say, here I am, I create, and I want you to take part in that creation, I want you to enjoy that creation. That's what Aaron Douglas Art Fair does. It gives that channel, gives that creative force for people in order for them to get their stuff out there. Now, I want to make sure we get this in a couple of times here so people know, uh, first of all, uh, the date of the Aaron Douglas Art Fair so they can get that in their calendars. Which is the 26th of September okay. and uh, it's all day long at the Art Park. And the Art Park yep. is? The Art Park is uh, on Huntoon between uh, Washburn and Lane. Mm -hmm. You can't miss it up behind the Dillons. Look for all the booths. <laughs> it, it. it would be a hard thing to miss. It's <laughs> it's where the big mural is. So very good, very good. So everybody needs to get that on their calendar. Yep. Ten years. Uh, it really is a spectacular. It's spectacular because it keeps growing the way it does. You know, people need to get involved. Mm -hmm. Whether whether you get involved as an artist at the fair, or whether you get involved with the committee, whether you get involved by making a charitable donation. We, in order to do this, we have to be able to have those funds coming in, you know, and if you donate to the fair, you're donating to the community. You're not just donating to the fair, you're donating to the community. You're donating to the artistic force that drives this community, and art is a big economic factor in Topeka. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we it's something that we definitely work towards is supporting the community through mm -hmm. the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. Absolutely. Uh, and what would you like to say to the person or persons who nominated Aaron Douglas Art Fair uh, for this honor? You all rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Very good. Yep. Very good. What would you like to say to the other uh, folks in the category with you, the nominees? Good luck. I I really do wish you luck. We're going to win, but I. I wish you luck just the same. Very good. And where would you like to see Topeka's art scene in five years? Topeka's art scene in five years, we're already heading there. We're heading towards national recognition on the art scene. We, in a lot of ways, we've bypassed larger cities like Kansas City. What I would like to see in five years is I'd like to see when someone says art, Topeka is the first thing that pops to their mind. All right. Well. Enough dedication, we'll get there, right? Yes. I'll tell you what, we have to do the lightning round now, and that's where we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. We're going to ask you some personal questions here. Uh, just give us the uh, first thing that pops up. Okay, I'm ready. Right. Okay. Here we go. For it. Uh, ready to go, and go. 
in your opinion, what was the greatest movie of all time? Uh, Wizard of Oz. All right. Which big name celebrity do you idolize the most? John Wayne. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, to fly. All right. Uh, do you have any tattoos? No. <laughs> 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 if you could only take one personal item on a trip to Mars, what would it be? Who would I take on a trip to Mars? A personal item. Oh, personal item on a trip to Mars. Uh, Sketchpad. Uh, who are the top three people that make you laugh the most? Oh, Harpo, Chico, and Groucho. All right. What's your favorite kind of sandwich? Uh, tuna. Your favorite artist? Um, me. Your favorite kind of music? Uh, oh, <laughs> rock and roll. Uh, if you were an ice cream, which flavor would you be? Oh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'd be peppermint. Why? Oh, because it tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> and who's your favorite local talk show host? Um, let me think a second. There's this guy named Chris Schultz. I don't know if you know him or not, but he's I pretty do. awesome. Yeah, hey, I agree. Okay. Absolutely. Well, that's the Gypsy. Uh, best of luck to you and everyone you. with the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. Awesome. Uh, a, a finalist here in the category for Community Arts of Arts Connects Artie Award. Uh, give you the thumbs up. Thumbs All up. Right. Very good. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you for nominating us.